Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my SDL3 programming series. In today's episode, we're going to do a little bit of refactoring and build a little sprite class just to clean up our code a little bit. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in. So previously, here's where we've left off in our little SDL application here. So again, we've got the SDL application struct here, which is a nice way to organize our sort of game application, which is going to hold all of the state. And we've got things like the window, the render, but this is what we want to fix here a little bit, moving this texture into basically a sprite class, and then we'll be able to build that up over time. And maybe we'll even call this a game object or game entity class where we can add components and so forth. But for now, let's just go ahead and start with one thing at a time and learn about building a sprite class. So anyways, just a little bit of a review of what we have here before we dive into our abstraction. Again, some more state for our application here. And then again, setting up our initial game states. And then we've got some things related to, again, our texture, which we'll abstract away in our sprite class. We've got uh, our destructor here, and then we've got our main game loop doing the input, update, and rendering functions here uh, one at a time here. I'll go ahead and scroll down since we're not going to do anything with input or update. And in otherwise, uh, the render here is where we're going to fix up our function here and move some of our rendering of the texture into the sprite class. And again, what is a sprite? Well, it basically is these things put together here, a rectangle holding where the sprite will be drawn and the texture with the actual texture data where we're going to be drawing the sprite. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into it. Now I can go ahead and clean up some of this code here since we understand rendering. We learned about uh, presenting our render in the previous lessons here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that here. We're not going to touch anything with our main loop. It's still rendering at 60 frames per second. And again, our main application is otherwise the same here. So again, our goal is going to be to build a little abstraction here. I'm going to call it Sprite for now. And again, depending on what type of little game that we make here, we might want to make this a game object or a game entity class. So it's something a little bit more generic. But for now, I basically just want this to be something that holds a texture. So let's go ahead and pop that in here. And it's also going to hold Let's give myself a little bit more room here. The position uh, here. So if I go ahead down um, in my application here, where we're actually doing our rendering here, uh, let's go ahead and search for render. Uh, let's do render with the parentheses. So we jump right to the function here. There we are. Uh, I basically want to grab this guy, this rectangle that we created here. Okay, that's going to hold the position of our sprite here. So let's go ahead and grab that and move that up here. And I'm going to write a render function here. And let's go ahead and grab the rest of our code related to rendering. Let's go ahead and paste that in here. And let's see what else we got here. Yep, I think that's it for now. Okay, so uh, a few other things that we're gonna want to, again, put in our sprite class. Let's go ahead and make a constructor, uh, which in C++ is gonna take the name of our type here. And we'll write a destructor as well. Now, again, this is uh, sort of a temporary thing uh, for destruction. And what do I mean by that? Well, the sprite right now is the owning class for the texture. So for now, I'm just going to have it sort of do everything. Um, again, we're going to want to write some sort of resource management later on, perhaps uh, have a resource manager. But uh, for now, the sprite's just going to own the texture and everything, and it'll clear its own data uh, since we're just building a little simple application here. So let's go ahead and move in uh, to the creation of our sprite, uh, the surface that we're going to take here. And then we'll be able to take in, uh, well, let's actually do, uh, we can either take it as a const char star to sort of match the C API, or since we're in C++, we could take it in a string here. Uh, I'm okay with either one here, but let's just go ahead and do file name. And this is going to take in a C string in the load bitmap function here. Uh, we are going to know, need to know about our renderer. That's okay. So this is pretty common in SDL here. Oops. Uh, that we'll need to uh, pass the renderer around here. Uh, you can just make it R or something like that here. Um, you know, you could hold on to a reference of this or look it up somewhere in some sort of application state or something. I'm okay with just passing it around for now. Uh, you know, no, no problem there. Uh, and we'll go ahead and destroy our surface right away. Again, a, a sprite's going to be, again, something that just holds a texture, which is on the GPU and holds that reference to it. So that'll be okay here uh, for now. Uh, let's go ahead and see what else we want to make sure that we destroy our texture in the right place in our sprite class. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And that should be okay. I think that's looking pretty good so far. Um, and let's see here what else we need to add here. Ah, so in our render uh, function, we'll again need to pass in the SDL uh, renderer R. 
Um, let's go ahead and just do that here. And you can choose how to name these, but again, R works for me here. Uh, okay, so now in our application, let's go ahead and see with our sprite class here. Let's go ahead and refactor this a little bit to have our sprite. Uh, let's go ahead and then in our constructor for now, uh, we will go ahead and just call... Actually, let, let's set this up a little bit more properly. So our constructor is going to have to deal with the you know construction of uh, some of our application things here. And again, we're probably going to move Sprite away again into some sort of like resource management or maybe some application state or like a scene class or a scene struct to hold things. But uh, let, let's just start abstracting that a little bit here. I'm just going to say load game data, something like this here, uh, or setup. Uh, well, let's call it setup scene data here uh, for our scene. And we'll go ahead and initialize our Sprite here. This could be a Sprite. And I think we just had this as uh character something like that let's look in our directory what that sprite was yeah so that's just right in here uh, and again just for a little bit of organization since we have some time in this video let's just go ahead and make this uh, an assets directory and move our character into assets just to have a little bit of organization here in our actual uh directory so something like this here okay so uh assets and character bmp all right and that should set up our sprite and then what do we need to do here? Well, uh, we have our sprite in the render function here. So let's do m sprite. Uh, I need to pass in the render and render into that guy. Uh, and let's see here. I think I omitted the render in our sprite creation. Uh, so what was it set up? Yeah, let's do it here. Let's pass in our m renderer. And then we'll also call uh, initialize our game data game or slash scene data. Okay, because we could be not building a game. <laughs> so uh, setup scene data. That'll do the trick here. Okay, let's see if this compiles. So G here. Let's see what we missed here. Uh, line 45. What's this say here? No matching function call. Oops, uh, looks like I just messed up the constructor here. Let's go ahead and see what I did here. Um, let's see where it's complaining at line 45. Oh, for some reason it doesn't like this or it doesn't like that for some reason. Oh, something with the constructors getting messed up here. 131. Oh, what did I do here? M sprite. This should be dot render, that's why. All sorts of weird errors. Okay, that got rid of that one here. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, the constructor. Okay. Uh, we could provide a default constructor. Uh, let's see. Do something like that here. Just to silence the errors. That'll do okay. Uh, okay, so we don't see anything here. Because, again, it's going to call this uh, constructor, I guess, here. So let's go ahead and scroll down. Let's make sure that everything is getting loaded and created. I think this is all okay here. Uh, let's just see here. Uh, a couple of design decisions here. I mean, uh, let's manage a lifetime explicitly here. This is probably what we want to do here. Uh, equals yeah, new sprite. Okay, this will be a little bit better here. And eventually this is what we're going to have to do anyways. Um, uh, manage the lifetimes here. So this way we can get away with calling our constructor. And um, yeah, that was kind of nasty because otherwise we'd be calling the copy constructor when we did this uh, assignment here, uh, which is not exactly what we want to do here. There we go. So now we got our guy here. He is running around and moving. Uh, I guess the last thing that we want to do here is now uh, in our application, we need to actually uh, delete our sprite here. Delete and the sprite here. Um, now, again, some of you who've been watching my other series, like my C++ series, you might say, well, Mike, are there other ways that we could manage this? And, and certainly we could do, uh, just to show you, I'm going to keep using the raw pointers for now, just because we are in sort of a C API, but you could do shared uh, pointer uh, for the sprite here and, and have the lifetime manage automatically, and then it'll clean itself up uh, when the destructor is called. Um, and in practice, this is kind of something that we do want to think about. You know, when the application ends, by the time we get to this point, I mean, the operating system is going to clean the memory anyway. Uh, but again, remember what we're doing here. We're 
going to kind of set up things in our scene data. And then we're probably going to want another function. Again, if you're building this out as an engine or a complete game as like uh, load new scene, which would clear all the old scene data that you didn't need, uh, for instance. So again, being able to control the lifetimes of these things is, is important. Um, so anyways, uh, what I'm going to do here, though, is just leave it as a raw pointer. But I just wanted to go ahead and show you that if you wanted to see that. And uh, there we go, folks. So we have the uh, start of a sprite class here. And we can keep improving this because uh, our rectangle here, the sort of destination uh, rectangle here where we're rendering into, we could probably modify this. Uh, a little bit here. We probably want to even make this a uh, member variable here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that because we don't want this as static. That doesn't look great here. Uh, so let's just go ahead and let's move this guy here uh, up here. Let's put it in our constructor for now. I'm going to get rid of this one here to make sure that we always initialize uh, everything. And let's do SDL. Uh, F rect here, and I'll call M destination. Uh, yeah, destination is, is fine here. Uh, and again, that's where we are rendering to the location of our sprite, uh, so to speak here, just so we're clear about what that's doing. Uh, so we could go ahead and change this guy here. M destination, all right, and destination. Uh, and we really shouldn't be doing stuff like this in our render function, right? That's what our update's going to be for, uh, right? That comment just says draw the texture. So this is going to be void update. Uh, and of course, we could also mirror this and have a input. Uh, we're not doing anything with input yet. Maybe we'll get into that. Maybe we'll build a little like character controller or something. Uh, but this should do the trick here. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that builds. Okay, builds, uh, but our guy's not showing up anymore because we're not, uh, well, we're not updating it properly here. So let's go ahead in our application now. And again, you could imagine having some data structure to hold however many sprites you have and rendering them, calling render on each of them and update on each of them. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that with our sprite and sprite update. And now we should see Hopefully, uh, oh, now we don't see our guy here. What happened? We lost him. Let's see what we messed up. Uh, oops. Make sure I saved and ran. Let's see, we got our render. We're doing our update. And if we scroll around here, okay, we got our destination. Make sure we got our constructor being called here. Everything looks good so far, other than the classic, uh, renaming here. Uh, what did I do here? Let's see. I wonder if I can initialize this. Let's see here. M destination equals something like this here. Okay. There we go. Now our guys got, we've assigned the right uh, variable there. All right. So that's pretty nice here. We, I think we got everything moving along here uh, nicely. Uh, we basically recreated the same functionality that we had here. Um, and then it's really up to us, you know, we've got some of this stuff in our constructor. Maybe we want to set these values initially. Maybe we want to have a separate function here. Uh, so for instance, uh, and we can decide where we're going to do this here. Let's say set sprite position. Well, let's go ahead and do it here. And these are going to be floats X, Y, and Z or X and Y. Um, and we can kind of decide based off of what the common functionality is going to be here. If you want to do this, uh, like have a function just called like set sprite and just sets a bunch of things or, you know, just one thing here. Uh, let's, let's kind of break these up. I think it'll make sense for now. It's a nice API to have. Um, if you've played around with other libraries like um, SFML, for instance, they have a bunch of these functions like this. So again, you could kind of create this abstraction for you if it makes sense in, in the object oriented uh, mindset here, just because, yeah, we don't want to assume all of our sprites are going to be this large unless you're making a game then you have control over all this stuff um, but let's go ahead and set the uh, set sprite dimensions for the width and the height and we'll go ahead and just do that h all right and now i can kind of get rid of this here i mean i could maybe choose some defaults um you know it's it's sort of up to us here but uh, let's go ahead and just split the window here. And wherever we load our or set up our game data here, uh, let's do it in this here, msprite.set. 
sprite position, and that was at 50, 25. And let's set our sprite uh, dimensions here. Set sprite dimensions at 24 by 28. Let's go ahead and make sure that that's working. And then we could go ahead and get rid of this here. Yeah. All right. Uh, set sprite position. Oh, of course. Classic, classic. I've been programming in D too much. I always forget. I need to use the arrows there. There we go. All right, so that's kind of nice here. That's a little nice API so we can initialize everything and it's it's pretty clear every function has one job here. So again, you can kind of decide if you wanted to handle that in, in a constructor that just takes in all those things because that's kind of common and it'll save you some lines of code or if you explicitly want to do it. Again, some design decisions, but I think that'll wrap us up. Uh, that basically gets me to the uh, point where I want for the next lesson here where we can start talking about more things that we can do to the sprite class. Now, again, the sprite is just a generic sort of holder of a texture where we're going to draw it. Maybe we can have a source here. Maybe we can have some other stuff like collider components and so on. And pretty soon in, let's see here, about 180 lines of code, we'll add a little bit more here. We'll have pretty much a full game with an animating sprite and stuff. So uh, this is pretty exciting. But anyways, this is our major achievement for this lesson here, building this little sprite class here to hold a texture, a destination. We construct it successfully. We have some helper uh, functions just to do some uh, various tasks here. And then again, we've broken out and followed the same pattern as our game loop where we have update and render. And of course, you could have input here eventually, uh, depending on how we want to control this sprite with the keyboard and so on. Uh, but that's the basic idea. And then now our SDL application takes in a sprite. And again, as mentioned, you can go ahead if you want to jump ahead and maybe think about, well, where else could I hold these? Could I have an application or a scene or something? Um, for now, we're just having this special function here called setup scene data. Again, maybe you could take an argument and load something, but this is the idea of building a sort of uh, framework on top of SDL for, for your game. So anyways, that was the idea here. And again, the last little pieces we did, we did our sprite update and our sprite render. And already this function looks really, really nice here, basically where we do our basic uh, double buffer rendering, clear the screen and just render all of our sprites in whatever order we want here. So anyways, folks, with that said, hopefully uh, if you need any help, make sure to consult the SDL documentation. You can go ahead and check course.mshio, ask questions in the community forum, uh, or otherwise follow along in lessons and engage in the discussions in the comments below or the comments here as well. All right, folks, I'll look forward to otherwise seeing you in the next one.